Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, let's go ahead and give God some praise on it. doing well on this morning. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We just want to thank you for just being here on this morning. Thank you for the invite. Uh, amen. Ten years. Ten years. Man, God is good. God is awesome. God is awesome. Amen. First, give it honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is first and foremost in my life uh, to the pastor, Pastor Scott Dollar. To the color clergy, bishops, uh, to the saints, to the ain'ts, from the top to the bottom. Amen. We greet you this morning in Jesus' name. Uh, like I said, I thank you, I thank my wife for giving me uh, that uh, warm introduction. Amen. Um, yeah. hey man, it's always good to have back and like that. Amen. She said some good things. She said some good things Amen. about me. Hey man, I almost brought a tear in my eyes. So she really fit up with me. <laughs> no, it's been a long time. It'll be 31 years this October coming up. Wow. Hey man, and like I said, I, I tell her all the time. I was, you know, I, me and I, I always tell the story. Uh, me and my friend, uh, my childhood best friend, Curtis Harrison. Yeah, some of y'all know him. And it, he was over at the house and we was fooling around one of the years ago. And uh, I was, and was doing something, and I, I said something smart to her. He said, "All right, boy, she gonna leave you." Like, yeah, and I said, "Man, she ain't going nowhere." I said, "Don't, I said, don't nobody want her but me, and don't nobody want me but her." So we good. <laughs> I just said, "We good, we good." Uh, both my children are here. Yay. I have my son, my daughter. Hey, all three of me. I got a new son-in-law. I would be remiss if I said they just got married two weeks ago. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all now, I have got the best son in law. Oh, and, and I do. I tell my wife all the time, I said, man, I said, and the crazy thing about it is, y'all can have daughters. That's so, uh -huh. Let your wife pick. <laughs> Who she's gonna marry? Cause he didn't. Oh, they just, that, they, they, Angie. He worked with Angie, and he would see Deja's picture on on uh, Angie's desk, and they introduced and met each other through my wife. And uh, you know, five six years later, here they are. I so said, I got the best son in law in the world. I tell you, about it. I tell anybody that stuff, man. But uh, like I said it was a beautiful wedding. We had a great time and so forth and whatnot. But uh, like I said, it's you know, it's it's truly an honor. Just to be here, like I said, I know I see uh, my my best friend here, uh, Reverend Simpson. Reverend Simpson, man. That, when I tell you years ago when me and this guy met, and we traveled the roads from Houston to, uh, I mean, we've been all over the place together to Nassau, Bahamas, to St. Martin, St. Thomas, and we've traveled together. And when I tell y'all, when you need somebody in your life. Like that, mm -hmm. I said, young young preachers like I am and stuff. You know, to have somebody like that in your life that one will tell you when you're wrong. All right. That's it. You know, will tell you when you're wrong. Yes. You know, and will let you know, that, hey man, look, bro, that ain't right. right. You know, bro, you know, hey, look, you're breaking, yeah. break down. Oh, stuff. Right. And then he's and then and then and, and, and then the thing about it is with him, he's so open that if if I catch him wrong, I can say something to him and right. it's no. It's no, it's no, it's no, it's, it's, it's nothing. So, you know, again, I, I thank God that when I go out and preach, I can call him and he's always there to support me. Right. Amen. Right. So it's just good people like that. But then let me get to the brother Scott. I know y'all waiting for the word and I'm not, you know, I don't keep y'all here. Yeah, anybody know me? I don't keep long. So y'all roll with me and we're going to roll with out of here. Is that cool? Is that cool? But me and, me and uh, brother Scott, me and Pastor Scott go back years. I said it before I told you, he was a senior in high school and I was a freshman. But I remember that white Monte Carlo run. Oh, I remember. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> yep. Yep. Boy, if cars can talk and tell you some of the things that went on back then. But somebody say, but God. But God. <laughs> 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 no, I <laughs> We just keep it right there. We just keep it right there. But this this is he has been a solid brother. Ever since I know y'all think Eric didn't say nothing. He said it even less. I even less. So when I heard he was preaching. And then I see like my wife said, he see Eric 
Oh, okay, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Eric was my supervisor, unified, oh. and he still ain't said that much. <laughs> <laughs> but there is a word from God this morning. If you have your Bibles, I don't know if it's customary for you to stand and to read another word. If, you, if it is, do what you do. I said, I'm going to do my part, but we're going to come from the book of Job this morning. The very first chapter, I'm not, like I said, there's a very familiar passage of scripture. But when I spoke with, uh, when Brother Scott asked me, uh, Pastor Scott asked me to preach, uh, come for his anniversary, <clears throat> and we had him talk. As soon as he gave, as so, soon as he told me, and he was telling me about some of the things that were, were that he would had to deal with over the years in ministry. The Lord took me directly to here. So y'all just follow along with me. We're in Job, the first chapter. Uh, when you have to say amen, amen. amen. you don't have to say wait. Everybody has it. Job, the first chapter, beginning at verse number six. Okay. And I'll be reading verses six through twelve. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Uh -huh. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man? One that feareth God and assureth evil. Don't that sound like your pastor? <laughs> then, then Satan answered the Lord and said, Do a joke, fear God, for not. Has not thou made a hedge about him and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side? Ah. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put, put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he oh. will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. May we bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father and our God, it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Lord, coming to you again, once again, Lord, as humble as we know how, God. Just thanking you for our lying down last night, God. Thanking you for our rising up on this morning, God. God, thanking you for 10 years of blessing our pastor, Pastor Scott Dalton, God, and Lady Vanessa, God. God, please continue to bless them, God. But right now it's preaching time, God, and I ask that you just hide me behind the cross, God, to where the people see you and not me, God, to where the people hear you and not me, God. God, we ask that you just open up hearts and minds to receive and believe. What thus saith the Lord on this morning, God? Holy Spirit, have your way. Use me, guide me, God. God, so that you may get all the glory and be glorified in this place. For it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, just for this, just for a moment, I want to speak from the topic. You picked the right one. That's God's word. You picked the right one. Just tap your name and tell me you, you, you picked the right one. You picked the right one. <laughs> Have you ever asked the question, why are things happening to you? I mean, every which way you look, it seems as if bad things are happening to you and nothing seems to be going your way. Uh -huh. your, your life goes from being on top of the world one minute and in a matter of a few seconds is turned completely upside down. Uh -huh. There you stand or sit, your life completely changed forever. And you're left thinking, what on earth have I done? Or, or what did I ever do to deserve this? What, was it just the hand I was dealt? Or was it my sin? I thought I was living a life pleasing to God. So many questions and there seems to be no clear answer in sight. And then you begin to question God. Lord, what have I done? Do you, do you still love me? Why have all these bad things happened to me? The text we're in on this morning is a very familiar passage of scripture, a story we've all heard at one time or another. Uh -huh. But I want to encourage someone on today that because you may be going through right now, that there is still hope. And please, yeah. ma'am, and please, sir, don't give up the fight. Yes. Keep the faith and hold on because God has picked the right one. Yeah. Hey, Amen. The devil has been traveling to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. My guess would be that he had been watching Job from afar and seeing how blessed Job was and watching how he had been conducting his life. And knowing Satan, he probably said to himself, 
Look at him living his best life. I ain't got time to go back and forth with you ninjas, but yeah, he thinks he has, has it going on. And if, if I can get my hands on him, I, I, I bet I can make him curse God. Uh, I, I bet I can make him renounce his faith. But, but little did he know he was about to pick the right one. And, and, and so many times, so many times, you know, you, you look at, we talk about, we give the devil too much. Uh, credit. We, 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 we give the devil too much praise because whenever we're going through something bad or whenever we have a bad day, Brother Eric, uh, we, we, we start to say, well, Satan is getting the best of me. Uh, he's throwing the kitchen sink at me. No, 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 no. Love. You've got to understand that, 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 that I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, but you've got to understand sometimes God is going to carry you through some things. And the only way that we can be effective preachers, the only way we can be effective members, the only way we can be effective Christians is that we have to go through some things. We have to go through some things. And Satan, as, as, as the scripture tells us, he, he's back and forth in the earth, uh, trying to cause havoc and, 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 and trying to disturb, disrupt and disturb people's lives. And, 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 and the thing about it was he saw Job. Have you ever noticed how your enemies know what you're doing before you do? Have you ever wondered how your enemies and your haters uh -oh. know more about your business than you do. Uh -oh. uh, have you ever noticed that somebody can tell you what you posted on Facebook or Instagram and you never see that like button uh -oh. check? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Have you ever noticed that they can tell you, well, I saw on your Facebook that you, that you went to the Bahamas. Wait a minute, but I didn't see you hanging on that for liking anything. Uh -oh. I didn't see you on that comment uh, have a nice time. And what not, but you have enemies that, that, that know what you're doing. And so the, the enemy has sit back from afar and watched Job and was like, wait a minute, man. This this dude sitting right here and he's blessed. He's got money, he's got family, he's got cattle, he's he's got this, and and, and from from our standards today, we don't look at that as being rich. Right. But back then, the wealth wasn't what you had. And it was in your livestock, it was in your food, it was in your farming, it was in your family. And I consider myself a rich man today. I may not have a million in the bank, but I consider myself a rich man today because I got, some, I got a good family. I got good friends. I got good, I got good, I got good people in my life that are pray for me when I die. I got people in my life right now that are letting me know, Chris, you're wrong. Chris, if you don't change your ways, you're wrong. You, you're supposed to be standing up for something that's right. And what you're standing up for, it's not right, brother. Get, get your life in order. I got a wife. They don't mind telling the Christian wrong. I was telling the church this last week. I had to preach down at Beulah Baptist for this uh, Easter morning service. I was telling the church last week that uh, it was a rough day last Saturday. I got up. I, I was getting a migraine and I started fussing for no reason and couldn't find nothing. Sister Angela and I was, uh, I got, Angie, where is this at? Angie, where is that at? I can't find this. I can't find it. Chris, how am I supposed to know where you put it at? It's yours. <laughs> so she gets, so she gets slick, she gets slick with the mouth sometimes too. So. Yeah, she gets slick with the mouth sometimes too. So. And so, and so, Tracy sees me getting my son, he sees me getting out of pocket. And my brother and sister came out and get out of pocket. And I was getting out of pocket, and Tracy came up and he looked at me. And he said, Daddy. And he just done this. Turn and walk away. <laughs> Immediately, calm came over me. Immediately. Pastor Scott, he. He just gave me a timeout. I don't know if he was giving me a technical foul or calling a timeout. But either way, I knew I was, I was, I was getting out of pocket. And so I got my stuff. I told my angel, I said, I'm, I'm going to leave. I'm going out to the library. And I went out to the library and believe it or not, I was at peace. Mm -hmm. I, had, I was at peace because I knew I was going to a place I didn't need to. Right. And, so, and he brought me back down to a place where I needed to be, a place of humility. And see, and that's the problem with a lot of us today is we have no humility about ourselves. We don't like being humble. We don't like nobody to tell us this, and we don't like nobody to tell us that. But Job was one of them men that, that he, he, he was scared of God. Uh -huh. he, he shunned evil. Right. He walked. He was an upright man, and being perfect doesn't mean he didn't sin. But he tried to. He tried to live a life that was pleasing unto God. He knew where his help come from. When you know where your help come from, it ain't hard to lift up your hands. When you know where your help come from, it ain't hard to give God a hand clap of praise. When you know where your help come from, it's easy to say hallelujah. And I don't care what you're going through. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.
Amen. But have you ever noticed how some people that aren't saved will try to push your buttons? Trying to invoke a negative response from you to get you to argue or get out of character. And, so, and what makes it make what makes this text so good is that the Job was a man, he had perfect character. And so before his people, people loved him. People wanted to be around him. People knew what he had, and he always gave God the praise. Uh -huh. And they try, and that's again, they, they, uh, there's a reason why Satan wants you, and if you're dealing with something or things that seem a tad bit extra these days, don't count it as strange. Uh -huh. Just know that they picked the right one. Uh -huh. yes, sir. And we see in this text that, that, that Job had lost everything. I'm not going to insult you, uh, the theologians in here. And so, but y'all know he lost everything. He lost his family. He lost his lost co he lost his co-workers. He lost uh, everything pretty much in one fell swoop. And it's amazing to lose stuff over a period of time, but to lose stuff back to back to back to back to back. I mean that can that, that deals you a a, 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 a gut punch. It's a gut punch. But we see that in chapter 2, Satan wasn't through with Job. Uh -huh. Wasn't through with him at all. And, and Job went back to God. Uh, the devil, went, Satan went back to God and told him to Job, now he's, I'm asking permission to produce, to induce further calamity by attacking his body. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, understand, church, you don't get nothing but one of these. This temple right here, you don't get one of these, but, but you notice how the enemy works. He, he hits the family, then he hits the finances, then he hits the belongings, next to hell. And, and to add insult to injury, the one who was supposed to be his help me decides to chime in and lose faith and tells, tells Joe, why don't you curse God and die? Come on! I don't know what kind of godly women we got in here, but and my wife was to tell me that, I, I honestly think I might with dad home uh, think about slapping. <laughs> I'll think about it. I'll think about it. We're not condoning, not condoning violence or domestic violence is like scrolling out of line, but you pretty close when you asking me to curse God and die. Oh. Because the punishment I get for slapping her don't, don't even begin to compare the punishment that I would get for renouncing God, if you want to stand them up for me. I have to make it plain. I try to make it where everybody can understand. And so, but you, know, you, you start getting hit in your body. And trust me, I've been diagnosed with Graves' disease. I said, I'm fighting that. I'm, I'm waiting for the doctor to tell me I'm in remission. I said, I went to the doctor the other day and said, I got to get knee replacement. I said, I've had, I've had three knee surgeries on this one. I said, they tell me it needs to be replaced. I've had shoulder surgery on both my shoulders. I've had my bicep torn. Uh, I've had, uh, I got two parts of torn this L4, L5, and I can't see anymore. All right, so, so you understand how important this temple and this body is and stuff. And see, when the enemy comes in and starts to take, I don't know how many people in here dealing with high blood pressure. I don't know how many people in here dealing with, as the old folks say, sugar diabetes. I don't know. I don't know how many have, have congested heart failure and, and, and so forth. I don't know who's fighting with what. I don't know who's been diagnosed with cancer. I don't know who. I don't know who said that that, 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 that this morning they woke up and a doctor man told them you only have X amount of months to live and stuff. But when the enemy comes in and starts attacking your body, come on, have mercy. When the enemy comes in and, and it starts taking away, you, I, you took everything I had. Uh -huh. You take them, now you owe my help. I'm, uh, the, the scripture says that Job went and, and he, he he repented and he sat in ashes. And so, and so the thing about it was that uh, all the scriptures keep coming back to saying the same thing that when he went through all these things, uh, you go back to uh, verse number 20, it says, Then Job arose and, and read his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped. Mm -hmm. My God. She is crazy. And worshiped. Yes. Yes. You took my kids. Yes. You took my money. Yes. You took my house. Yes. You've taken my cars. And I'm still going to sit down and I'm going to worship God. Yes. And he said, naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return hither. The Lord gave, and the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, we get mad at God when the IRS comes in and takes our taxes. <laughs> we start... We start blaming God getting mad because gas prices is about four dollars a gallon. We get mad and upset. We won't go to church 
if the pastor preaches a sermon that you think that he's talking about you. We get mad and upset because Sister such and such wouldn't sit beside me this morning at church. She's going to sit beside this girl that she know that I don't like. You see how I, I we we'll sit right there in church the whole morning with our arms crossed, with our legs crossed. We won't raise our hands. We won't say amen. We won't say blessed be the name of the Lord. But this man lost everything. And he still conjured up enough praise inside of him, down on the inside. Naked I came from my mother's womb. Naked will I leave. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Still got my praise. Yeah. And then, I, I, I'm about done, but now here comes the, the part where everybody can chime in. I, I better get a whole lot of amens on this right here. Because this just really tripped me out when I went back. And, I, and it's crazy thing is that I had to read this whole book, the book of Job, to get the, the, the God had made me read it just to pull this out. And so, so, so now here comes Job's friends. Yeah. 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 Eliphaz, the Temanite, Bildad, the Shuite, and so far the Ne, 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 ne Amathites uh -huh. to, to give Job what for. Yeah. Now that they, they see him down and out, you can really tell who your real friends are when you yeah. begin to oh, face adversity. Yeah. I'm going to say that again. You can really tell who your real friends are when you begin to face adversity. Yeah. If you really want to know who the real ones are, Wait until you're going through an ordeal or crisis in your life. They'll begin to let you know what they really think about you. You weren't real. You 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 have been fooling us. Uh, you aren't who you claim to be. Your kids were bad. That's why they got killed. Why 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 don't you just confess what you have been been going through? I mean, it's bad enough that I've lost everything. My health is diminished. My wife has lost hope and trust in me. My kids have died. Now my friends are accusing me of being fake and a fraud. All the while, God's hand seems so far from me that I'm beginning to wonder if he really loves me. Come on. Or if he's even real. I'm at my lowest and darkest place, and I, I want to plead my case to God, but I don't know where to go, and I, I surely don't know where to turn. Yeah. In essence, the situation had Job cursing the womb he came out of, and the day he was born, wanted to throw in the towel, asking the sorrow man's question. But I want to stop right there. And I'm going to talk about friends. I got people, me and Reverend Simpson, we always have this saying that I keep my circle small. So if somebody stabs me in the back, I know exactly where that knife came from. We all get, we get hyped up and stuff, and it's kind of like the new age thing. I got 4,000 friends on, on Facebook, and I got... Oh, guys, I hate keep going back to Facebook and Instagram, but this seems to be the thing that catches everybody's attention. Yeah. I mean, like, if anybody like me, you get up in the morning, you pray, you do whatever you got to do on your way to work, you're out in your car, and you ain't supposed to be looking at your phone while you're driving, but you slip over there and look at your Instagram. Right. You see that light, come on, you got a notification, somebody likes something, you push, put it up there, or you got a new friend real quick, and you want to see who that, that person is. Right. It may be somebody all the way over in Kenya. Yeah. Uh, you don't even know, oh, I got a new friend on Facebook. How do you know that you're friend? <laughs> Come on. My God, Jesus. And it's crazy that friends are one. These are the guys, and they called them by name, and they gave they, they, they gave their nationality, they gave what they were and, and who they were and stuff. So, and these are supposed to be your boys. Right. These are supposed to be your boys, Pastor Scott. Right. And so, and now the, the people that you think, because see, I can go talk to Reverend Simpson and I can tell him things I don't tell my wife. I can let him know about some of the Not only are we brothers in Christ, we're brothers with Masonic brothers. Right. Uh -huh. And so he was there when I got raised. Right. And see, it's a certain things, it's certain things, Sister Rhonda, that you can tell Angie that you wouldn't tell me. Uh -huh. It's certain things, Sister Angela, that you can talk to your, your girls, and Sister Angela, you can talk to your girls about. That is such, and Sister Lady Vanessa, that you can talk to your sister about that you can't talk to Pastor Scott about. And see, when you have those people close in your life, you share intimate, deep, dark things. You share things with them about, hey, this is how I'm feeling right now. Hey, but look, man, you know, my, my, me and my wife were having issues, and, and, and you know, we're, she's sleeping in a separate bedroom. My God, Jesus. My, my husband don't, doesn't love me anymore. He, he, he's, 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 I think he's having an affair. And stuff. I, girl, I don't know what to do. I think I'm going to hire a private investigator and have a following. 
Y'all act like this stuff ain't real. Man can get together, man. Hey, man, this sister at work, man. She been eyeing me, man. I, I think, I think she, I think she wants to, man. I, 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 I don't want to commit to that thing, man. You know, I love my wife, but man, this chick, man, she's, whoo, boy, she's got a body, man. She looks good, man. She's telling me everything I want to hear. And then you go back home and you start an argument with your wife to see how far she can push you. The kind of I will stop right there. Yeah, 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 you know, I'm dealing with, yeah, I'm dealing with all kinds of things, depression. My, my mama and my dad is only forcing me, trying to do good in school, telling me I need to do this, I need to do that. And if I don't do this, they're going to put me out of the house or, or, or they, they, they I, I don't know how to cope with this thing. I talked last week, I don't know what your coping mechanism is. I don't know how you get through certain ordeals, certain situations. I don't know if you have to smoke a joint to cope. I don't know if you have to drink to cope. I don't know if you have to get on the phone. I don't know if you, you have to get on the, uh, the internet and start looking up porn sites. I don't know how you cope with what you're going through. Yeah. Right. But I have to tell somebody, because not everything we can't, we, we can't keep no secret. My God, Jesus. We can't keep a secret. <laughs> but these are supposed to be my boys. Right. So then the people that you confide in, you trust in, now they're telling you, oh, you was fake. We knew you was jacked up all along. We knew you wasn't who you said you was. Oh, you, a ho you was a holy roller. Now all of this is happening. You're losing everything. Uh-huh. Where is God now? Uh-huh. Who's that God you serve now? My God, Jesus. And the whole time, me, I'm going through, I I'm struggling with this thing. I'm struggling with this thing because now I... I, I don't know where to turn. I, I don't know where I'm going. I, I, I don't know how these lights are going to stay on. Come on. Yes, sir. Pastor Scott told me, he said, Chris, he said, I've been here for 10 years and I haven't taken a salary. I'm like, who's paying the bills? And God laid this upon me. And said, so you, you're going through all these things. 10 years hadn't been easy. That's right. That's right. If you ask, hey, you ask Pastor Scott outside of here, I can say it because I'm gonna leave after this. He probably said it was hard as hell. Come on, preacher. Come on. I'm gonna leave after this. Y'all you know. act like y'all don't know my struggles. You know, like him, him and Lady Vanessa. How many nights he's laid up crying in her lap, and she laid up crying to him, wondering how things are gonna get done, wondering when God is gonna send the right people in here, wondering when God's gonna send that person in here to write that million dollar check. It's coming. It's that two more. It's coming. Somebody's coming. Y'all, y'all good right now? But God's gonna really take you over into battle because He picked the right one. See, can everybody carry that mantle? Can everybody carry that load? That's not, and a last man would have gave up a long time ago. But 10 years later, oh, y'all will start giving God praise right now. Y'all will stand up and start giving God praise right now. Because God made a way. God done it. God's going to continue to do it. He's going to continue to make ways. He's going to continue to bless. He's going to continue to send people this way in this house. Don't, grow, get, don't get weary and well yeah. I know you probably heard other preachers like, oh man, we call me, you got a little congregation. Yeah. So I ain't gonna preach. I told him, as soon as I got it, I said, I'm gonna preach like I ain't got this sense of the war. Yeah. I'm gonna say, I don't care if it's a million or one. I learned a long time ago as a preacher, whenever you get a chance to stay, you better preach like it's your last yeah. time. You better preach like it's your last time. You don't know what souls need to hear what you've got to say. But it's crazy about your friends, though. Yes, sir. Yeah. It's crazy that they see God's hand upon you. Uh -huh. I, 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 I look at you, and I see God's hand upon you. I see God's hand on this ministry. Oh, yeah. I see God's hand on this building. Uh -huh. I see God's hand on where you're going to go. Uh -huh. I see, and it's, uh -huh. it's crazy that I can feel this way, Reverend Simpson, right uh -huh. now. It's crazy that I'm feeling this way about this brother. Yes, sir. I haven't seen Scott in what? How many years? It's been a few years. But still, when I walked in and I felt the presence, yes. I, the, yes. the pastor yes. comes out and preaches. Yes. The pastor asks, can I, you need me to do anything for you? You need me to carry this? No, 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 no. You passed. It's your anniversary. Right. I'm just a visitor in this land this morning. Yes. 
But it's crazy how friends, or so called friends, are. So we learn a lot about, like, yeah, as my daughter, they learn a lot about who their real friends are just going, just trying to get married. Yes. 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 Glory to your name. I, I've lost everything. And my kids are dead. I ain't got no money. My wife is talking crazy. And my friends are coming and they, they came and they came and the Bible tells you, you come they, they gave him speeches yeah. on how wrong he was and yeah. how about how he needs to confess his sin and how he needs to confess his wrongdoings and this and that. But if I'm so bad uh -huh. and you hanging with me, how bad? Uh -huh. Preach it for me. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, how bad are you? It's crazy, but I, I don't even want to go into it any further about the friends, but it, it had Job asking the sorrowful man's question, which is, why is light given to a man whose way is hid? My God, Jesus. And whom God hath hedged in. Mm -hmm. Verses 3, chapter, verse 3 and 23. Mm -hmm. Job's case was such that life itself became irksome. He wondered why he should be kept alive to suffer. He, could not mercy have permitted him to die out of hand? Light is most precious, yet we may come to ask, why is it given? At the same time that men often desire death and feel that it would be a relief, it might be to them the greatest possible calamity. I'm going to stop right there. At the same time that men often desire death. But see, Job wanted to die. Because right. he, he cursed the womb that he came out of. He cursed the day that he was born. And he was like, it's better for me to just go ahead and die right, right now right. versus to suffer any more loss. I mean, I, I can't lose any more. Right. Right. I've been hurt enough. Right. And so I'm trying, I need to get, I, I, Job was trying to plead his case to those so-called friends. And a lot of times, church, I want to tell you, stop trying to justify and plead your case to Negroes that don't believe in you anyway. Quit trying to explain to people what's going on in your life and expect them to understand what's going on. And you don't understand the calling and the anointing that I have on my life. Right. I, I, people, I, I was telling Pastor Scott, that, like I said, I'm an open book. I hope this is being, no, I ain't going to say I hope it's recorded, but if it is, oh well. I'm going to tell it like it is. When several years ago, there was a, uh, we lost our pastor at Goodwill. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we had, they went through a process and whatnot. I wanted to vote. They told me that they wanted me to be a contingency plan. Mm -hmm. they told me that, you know, it's until we want to bring this pastor in. And as long as you stay here, that when he retires, that you'll be the pastor. I went, wait a minute, what? I want to vote. <laughs> what happened? Notice, people, some of my own family members, by, by marriage. <laughs> decided that Chris wasn't married to pastor of church. My God. You talking about something that cut deep. Yeah. I'm talking about me. I ain't got to talk about nobody else. I can talk about me, what I've been through in my life, what me and my family have been through. How is it somebody that hadn't been called? Hadn't taken a class in seminary, gonna make a decision and try to override what the people said because in the Baptist church, well, Thomas, which means the people rule, and every, you can get voted in and you can get voted out. That's right. That's right. That's right. So when you get voted in and then somebody votes you, uh, it's just. But to, to hear that people that actually are supposed to be in your corner, uh -huh. oh, we didn't vote for him. Oh. So I got built. I returned. I was mad. I was upset. I done what I was supposed to do. But this still doesn't nothing take away from the hurt of people that you thought was supposed to be in your corner. And stuff. People that you didn't trust inside your home makes me think now when you come to my house, what are you, you looking to pay us new bills? I got up on the refrigerator because I got enough of them. <laughs> But I, I just want you to understand the hurt and the pain that you have to deal with yeah. when you having to deal with friends that are supposed to be friends. Yeah. I told my daughter and her, her husband, I said, y'all first you get married, cut all your friends, stay home and enjoy each other. Right. Right. Stay home and enjoy right. each other. Mm -hmm. 
But at the same time, Job had got to a point to where he wanted to die. And so, you see, the thing about it is that uh, men often desire death and, and feel that it would be a relief. But it might be to them the greatest possible calamity because if you hadn't said to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you told me to hell forever. Uh -huh. That ain't no place I want to go. I don't know about you, but I, I, you, as, I say, as uh, some of the pastors say, you better get you some fire insurance. <laughs> Y'all catch out my way too. <laughs> you better get you some fire insurance. <laughs> they, may be, they may be wholly unprepared for it. For a sin of the grave contains no rest. The, etern the eternal world furnishes no repose. Uh -huh. One design of God in such sorrows may be to show the wicked how intolerable it will be due to pain. And how important it is for them to be ready to die. If they cannot, if they cannot bear the pains and sorrows of a few hours in this short life, how can they endure eternal sufferings? Right. It is so desirable to be released from the sorrows of the body. Here, if it is felt that the grave, with all that is, it, it, it is in it, and uh, would be a place of repose, how important is it to find some way to be secured from everlasting pain? The true place of release from suffering for a sinner is not the grave. It is in the pardoning mercy of God. And in that pure heaven that which he is invited through the blood of the cross. And that, and that holy heaven is the only real repose from suffering from sin. And heaven will be as sweeter and uh, is, is all, will be all the more sweeter in proportion to the extremity of pain which is endured on earth. Uh -huh. If you fast forward, as I said, I'm about done to chapter 38. The Lord finally speaks to Job. After Job is playing his case. After Job has been through all that he's been through, God finally speaks in chapter 38. Uh -huh. And he begins, and, and, and they go back and forth, and the Lord is letting Job know all of the works of his marvelous hands. And the works of his marvelous hands, as he said, he's telling Job, he said, where were you when I flung the stars up in the sky? Where were you when I put the sands on the beach? Where were you when I blew, blew breath in the man? And where were you when I pulled a rib from a woman and made from a man and made woman? Where were you when I created the heavens and the earth? Where were you when I created you? And you have to understand that Job tries to plead his case, and God was letting him know all along that it was him. Understand what you're going through right now. It's all God. Quit giving the devil credit. God is setting you up. I don't know who in your life that you need to be there for. I don't know who it is in your life that you need to minister to. We've all, as I told the church last week, we all have our own custom-made cross right. that we have to carry yes, with our name yes, on it. Right. And I can't carry your cross, and you can't carry mine. As much as I love my God and my son, my son-in-law, my wife, I, I can't carry their cross, and they can't carry mine. Amen. That was what I told the church last week. God says, he told, said, told Simon, said, you, you carry the cross, and I'll carry the rest. Because see, the thing about it was, he couldn't carry the sin of the world. Simon couldn't carry the sin that I that, that my baby can carry the sin that I've had in my life. Come on. And if you be honest with yourself, can't nobody carry that sin but Jesus Christ. And Job was pleading his case and pleading his case, and God was letting him know that Job it was me. And that he was in full control of everything that takes place in our lives. So much so that Job had to repent. And so Job repented. And so God said, you know what? You remember the friends we just talked about a little while ago? He said, I'm going to get to them. I'm going to take care of them because yeah, they, they went. You can look at it up in verse 42. He told, God told, told the boys that, you know, I, I, I'm not satisfied. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. I'm not satisfied with what, right. you, what you went back and done to Job. Y'all should have been there for him. Y'all should have been better friends. Y'all should have been a better example. I mean, you've had some pastors to come out and, and doubt what you're doing and yeah. probably say, you know, hey, maybe, maybe you need to fold up. Yeah. Maybe you need to fold up. Might not be a bad idea. But, but God says, wait a minute. I picked you. I picked the right one. Ten years later, I picked the right one. And if you have to, bro, Scott, repent for them brothers that didn't believe in you. Repent for them people that didn't believe in you. Repent for them, not all them naysayers. Repent, repent for all them 
I'm Dallas. Remember all the people that talk bad and have their name up in your up in their mouth about you. Yeah. Repent yeah. for them. Yeah. And then pray for them. Hallelujah. Because the thing about it is, what, what I like the most about this text was that everybody says Job went through. And then he got double his trouble. <laughs> True enough, Job got double for his trouble. Yes, sir. But in verse number 10, chapter 42, verse 10 in Job, it says that when Job prayed for his friends, every now and again, all those ninjas that, that talk about you, all those ninjas that, 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 that run you down, all those ninjas that don't believe in you, sometimes you have to pray for them. And when you begin to pray for them, God will give you double for your trouble. God will begin to restore you. God will begin to bring you back. God will begin to add people to the ministry. God will begin to see checks start coming in from out of nowhere. And the only reason he was able to do it, because Jesus Christ went to the cross. God saw that the world was in trouble and we was in need of a savior. So he had to take on flesh. He came down through a virgin Mary. Y'all read it in your affirmations. He was born a man of no sin. He walked this earth. Jesus done this thing. 33 and a half years later, he was hanging on the cross. And the whole time he was hanging on the cross, he had you in mind. Because everything that we go through, everything that I've been through, everything that I know, begins and ends with Jesus Christ. And if you think anything less, then you're wrong. And I hate to have to tell you this on this morning, but you ought to tell somebody when you're leaving here, devil, you picked the right one. Because I'm going to stand. I'm going to last 10 more years. I'm going to be standing here. 20 more years. I'm going to be standing here. 30 more years. We are a new family. 30 more years. I'm going to have churches out here. True Word Fellowship is going to blow up. But you got to believe it. you got to start praising God right now. You got to start praising God like it's already happened. The blood has been shed. The cross is no more. You got to take it to Jesus. You got to understand that when the devil got up this morning and he saw you, he tried to stop this, but he said, Here come Chris Dalton. Because you picked the right one. You picked the right one to give his message this morning. Because God's going to bless you, my brother. Amen. Amen. You may be seen. I just want y'all to see. It's crazy. When, when, God, when I said, when I talked, bro, Scott, God gave me this message to take me nowhere else. I started to preach that. Romans 8, 37, more than a conqueror. Mm -hmm. But we know that. Uh -huh. We even conquered a whole lot of things in your life. Just like you being born, you conquered a whole lot of things in life. Oh, it says it five million, and you made it, you one in a million, man. Come on. Give God a praise. Yeah. But God wanted me to show you true word that. Even all of this, you may be going through, like, like brother, brother Eric said. I mean, you know, it's crazy that you know, you you know, God, where God has brought you from. Yes. And the thing about it is, I know that God, God showed me in the spirit that that I know that brother Scott, Pastor Scott, has probably dealt with a whole lot of emotional trauma. That some days, Lady Vanessa, he probably hasn't even told you about. Mm -hmm. My God, Jesus. I can imagine. That sometimes riding down the road that he's asking himself, is this really working? Right. Amen. I can imagine that sometimes when he's paying a double mortgage and then two water bills and then two light bills. <laughs> is it really working? Yeah. And knowing, yeah. knowing, Ron, you know how we know Scott. Yeah. I'm gonna call him Scott. He's Pastor Scott. We on the we family. We all know Scott, how Scott was. How was he able to handle the burden yeah. of all this stuff the enemy's throwing at him? Yes, How am I able to stand and face my wife knowing I'm never taking a salary? I'm paying all these bills. I'm trying to get people to come. And the people that I have there, I'm trying to instill this word in them. But ain't nobody encouraging me. Yes, sir. I want to rip my clothes right now. And I want to, I want to repeat, God, make, did I make a mistake? This thing is too real. I I, I hurt for I, I'm, I'm I'm praising God for him, but I hurt for him, and I I understand the pain that I went through in my ordeal. But I also now I'm looking, and I can't even begin to imagine 
the walk that that man has to walk every Sunday, walking in here, walking out leaving. Y'all got a close knit family here. I get, and brother, brother Eric talks about how you, you know, everybody has each other's back. Yeah. And so, what did y'all ever think about the struggle and oppression that's on this man? Mm. I mean, stuff he can't tell his wife. Mm. Pains that, that, that come and thoughts that come in his mind that, that, that is the world better off without me? Mm. I got a daughter. Mm. What kind of. Does she, does, are, are, are people judging me as a failure because I, I, I've been here and, and, and we, we're just here? I mean, they don't know what's going on on the inside. They're looking at the outside. Right. 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 See how many friends you got on Facebook? That's what it is. You ain't famous. You ain't. You, you ain't, you ain't. <laughs> but God, want, God wanted me to let you know that even in all this, that even when you're going through, even when it looks like that I can't be found, I picked you. Yes. 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 I picked the right one. So y'all don't give God praise for anything else. Give praise, praise for your pastor. Give praise to God first. So give, give praise to your pastor because God picked the right one for this appointed place, for this appointed time, for this appointed season. And y'all got a whole lot more to do. To God be the glory. Amen. Get much better. Oh, uh, like I know Chris for since I was about eight or nine 